Oh. Hi, everyone. It's Pastor Eddie, and it is the midweek devotional prayer uh, recording. And again, I want to thank you for tuning in to um, the Easter Tide Psalms. Uh, we're starting uh, our season uh, today with a recording of um, the 34th Psalm, verses 1 through 8. Thank you for, again, uh, saving some time uh, to join your friends and the members of Westminster Presbyterian Church, uh, the Church by the Sea. Um, I hope that as we experience with the uh, series of the Lenten Psalms, that you also will find a lot of meaning and purpose for this season of Easter Eastertide. Uh, so wherever you find yourself, here or there, uh, I hope that your time together will help guide um, yours and my time with God as we try to live into the resurrection uh, season. I am back in the sanctuary, uh, our intimate and cozy sanctuary. Uh, I hope that you are comfortable at your home or wherever you might find yourself, maybe at uh, your favorite coffee shop. For the next seven seasons, we're going to be looking at the lectionaries, uh, psalms that have been assigned for, for Easter. I think it may be helpful to give us a little background on what Easter Eastertide uh, means. We're just two Sundays, this coming Sunday, just two Sundays into Easter. Uh, and that marks the beginning of Easter tide, kind of like a, a wave, you know, a tide, right, uh, on the Easter season. Easter uh, tide ends on the 50th day after Easter, uh, which is known as Pentecost. That's then clicks a new liturgical season for the church. So we go 50 days uh, Easter tide, and then it concludes with an Pentecost, and that starts then a new calendar in the liturgical calendar of the church, which is Pentecost, which is the season of the Holy Spirit. Some of you might be asking yourself, why 50 uh, days? Uh, and it's quite simple. After the resurrection of Christ, Jesus spent 50 days on earth before he then ascended. And then there were 10 additional days in which he was in and out of people's lives for a total of 50 days. So uh, after the resurrection, he is 40 days with the disciples and with people uh, before the ascension. And then there is another uh, 10 more days uh, before the season of Pentecost. And that then completes the, the 50 days. So the great 50 days are a celebration of the resurrection of Christ. And that all means for us, uh, that leads us into launching then, uh, again, the season of the Holy Spirit, uh, Pentecost, which is the mission of the church. And at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes, descends upon the disciples, and they're then encouraged and given the power to go out and to preach uh, with the power of the Holy Spirit there is in Christ. And that starts then Pentecost, being sent uh, the apostles, right? So that's a little background on the um, Easter tie season. It's 50 days before uh, our new season of Pentecost. So let's turn our time then to the 34th Psalm. And I'm just going to read the first eight verses. And I'm going to read to you then from the um, newly revised standard version. So let's ready ourselves. Uh, take a deep breath with me. It's been uh, quite a morning, uh, so <laughs> forgive me if I look a little bit uh, uh, raggedy and, and uh, a little bit uh, uh, fatigued, but uh, it's been a very good productive day, but it's just been uh, occupied. And now is a good place for us to pause and to renew ourselves with the Word of God. The 34th Psalm, the first eight verses. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. 
Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see, the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. What a wonderful way to conclude our psalm today. Taste and see, the Lord is good. Notice it begins on first on the first verse. I will bless the Lord at all times. Right? Continually, he says, he will be uh, giving praises to the Lord. And then on verse 8, it concludes with, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the word of God for you, for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, here is a little bit of what I prepared for us today. <clears throat> when we look at the world, the affairs of the world today, uh, I would imagine that you are as perplexed as I am, that you are at a loss as I am. So just one week into the Easter season, and I wonder what different, what's different last Sunday, Easter Sunday made? Is it that our lives and the world are different because of Easter? And if so, how and in what ways our lives are different? I am struck if you, you know, let's go back again to the scripture. I am, I'm really kind of uh, struck at how the, uh, the unlimited scope of the psalm. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He delivered me from all my fears. Your faces shall never be ashamed. And then it says, it says, this poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord. And not only heard by the Lord, but was also saved from every trouble. The uh, 34th uh, Psalm was written by David after a particularly stormy season in his life. Literally, David was running for his life. Saul, King Saul at the time, was after David. So literally, he is in the middle of a big storm. And yet the psalm opened with a reminder of how God wants us to live with praise always on our lips. But I feel that, I feel like the weight, there's a weight in our shoulders and it makes it very hard then to praise God when life is hard. Even the righteous, meaning those who are obedient uh, with the word of God and disciplined in the word of God and in the ways of God, even the righteous, the ones who worship God and are obedient to God, face troubles, many troubles. So the question is, then why do we praise God in the storm? Why would we? So the question then deserves attention, which means that you and I have to make a choice. You and I have to make a choice whether to praise God or to not praise God. Praise is very hard. Praise is very hard. Uh, when we are in those difficult situations of our lives. Our focus is on our problems for the most part, 
our focus is on our problems, and we can't see all the blessings in our lives because we're so focused on the issues, the problems that are so overwhelming. We're worried and, and fearful. So our hearts are not full of joy and praise because our focus is in a different direction. Yet this is exactly when we need to refocus, right, our hearts and minds and souls and then praise God continually. Here's the thing, and we know that this is to be true for you as well as for me, right? If you surround yourself with those who complain and speak words of despair and finger pointing and blaming, you will fill your heart with those same feelings. But if you surround yourself with people who speak words of life and praising God and believing in God's power, then you'll find your heart with God and keep your eyes fixed on him. It's like they say, birds of a feather, you know, eat together, fly together. So if you hang around the people that are negative, then guess what's going to happen to your disposition, to your attitude, to your mind, to your heart? You, you'll get very negative too, right? When you do praise God, it changes our perspective and perception of the situations that engulf us, you know, that surrounds us, right? The problems that we're dealing with. The problems don't immediately go away, but our gaze shifts from our problems to God. When we fix our eyes on God, the problems of this world begin to fade away. When praise pours out of our mouth, then joy begins to fill our hearts. It's a simultaneous exchange. Praise pours out of our mouth and joy begins to fill our hearts. Now, this may sound to you like uh, too much to hope for, but I would say, why not aim high, right? Why not give it a try? The outcome is not dependent on yours and my strength. This is where we get things wrong, right? The outcome is not dependent on yours or my strength, but on God's gracious response to a poor soul prayer. That's what the scripture says, right? That's what the psalm says on verse, um, where is it? Six. It says, this poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord. Was heard by the Lord. So the outcome is not depending on yours and my strength, but really on God's faithfulness, right? We can act on the encouragement of this psalm. And like then the psalmist, we can then encourage others to do so likewise, right? When it is hard then to praise, you simply have to begin somewhere. You and I have to uh, start uh, somewhere and take the first step, right? So take one step, sing one song, uh, say one prayer. Whatever it is, take that first step to begin to shift your focus from the negatives to the positive. Find, find one good thing that is in your lips that you can praise God for. Just one thing. And as you then begin to focus or refocus your eyes and your heart, the words just kind of begin just to pour out from your mouth. And what you'll notice is if you take a little piece of paper, you know, you begin to notice and write down all the blessings that you have been missing because your focus has been looking the other way, the negative way. You begin to notice how many wonderful things and how many wonderful gifts God has bestowed upon you. So many wonderful things about this life that because your focus is somewhere else that you're totally missing uh, seeing and also uh, feeling too. The 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 truth is right, and you and I know this is that the problems in our lives are not going to instantly resolve or dissolve, but 
shifting and beginning to sing a song that has a different tune, a happier tune, a joyful tune, a hopeful tune, right? Soon you begin to realize that your focus is shifting on the storms and starts believing in God's promises and faithfulness and goodness, knowing God would lead you through then this Easter tide season amidst all the challenges in the world. You know, if I was I was listening to the news on the way to the church, you know, and this issue in Alabama with this uh, sad mass shooting again, or in the country of Sudan and what's going on now with uh, this power struggle between two generals there that used to work together, and now there's a power struggle or the ongoing situation with the war in Ukraine. Uh, it, it just seems that praising God, it's, it's not going to do much. And so little by little, then we begin to discount and we start looking in another direction. And all of a sudden, you just totally lose your sense of hope because you're such deep into this well of despair. And so what the psalmist is trying to indicate to us, in the middle of that running for his life, David, King David that at the time, says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So he understands that even in the midst of the despair, that there's a sense of gratitude for all the blessings that he can sit down and start you know, being grateful about. And that changes your attitude and your focus in life. Knowing God, that he God will pull you through whatever season you're facing. And no matter the resolution of the issue then that you are facing or are currently facing, uh, that change of attitude is going to make a huge difference. So my friends, in this Easter tight season, how are you praising God in the middle of your storm? What is the storm that you're facing? A surgery? A recent diagnose? Maybe you got news that one of your loved ones, the health is very fragile and may not be uh, soon, will take its last breath. These are very serious storms that we face in our lives. So what are you focusing on? On the storms in your life? Or do you have your eyes fixed on the risen Christ? It's very different. The choice is very, cannot be any more clear, right? Are you going to focus on the storms of your life? Or are you going to shift your focus and look at the risen Christ? How then are you praising God in this season? Will you take a step and offer God your praise today, I would encourage us to then focus, right, your thoughts and your prayers on praising God, you know? Praise God for who God is and thank God for all the blessings in your life. I think that's the healthier choice that is before us uh, as we begin our Easter tide with the reflection on the 34th Psalm. Let us pray. Lord of glory and God of glory, creator, almighty, we praise you today and we praise you tomorrow, all the days of our lives, even in the middle of our storms. We cry out and you hear our crying. You surround us and you protect us. You deliver us from any trials. May we ever sing you praises to all who will hear, even through the storms and the trials of this life. May we keep our eyes fixed on you and rejoice in your glory and in your majesty. In the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Don't forget that uh, next week is Reverend uh, Charles Gilmore from the Cool Spring Presbyterian Church will be doing the reflection. And I believe that he will be doing the reflection on the 23rd Psalm which is one of our favorites, right? Uh, so until we meet again,
Uh, peace be with you. And thank you for being patient with us as we put together these uh, midweek devotionals so that you can enjoy in the comfort of your home. Thank you again. And again, peace be with you.